Hey, welcome to another Hangout on Air with the Barker Cast. I'm Jose. Hey, I'm Ryan. I waved with two hey. hands. <laughs> so today we're doing this uh, special little Kickstarter Hangout and, um, you know, welcome. Yeah, yeah. We, um, we've we only got, as we're re- recording this, we've only got four days left. Um, and so... Uh, just to kind of kick off the, the the beginning of the end here, uh, we want to kind of go over what what's available, what's left, where we're at, um, that kind of stuff. So we broke the two thousand dollar barrier, and we're working harder than ever to uh, prepare all sorts of interesting episodes for you guys. I've been writing a few articles for the blog. Uh, you may have seen uh, recently. You know, I'm trying to make up for Rob's absence because Rob was very very prolific. He was the news guy for our podcast. And so now we have to kind of make up for the, the, the blog posts and the, on the website. So I've been writing a few articles to make up for it, and it's made me go deeper into a few aspects of Clyde Barker's career that I, I never did before. You know, for example, on, on part one of my series, Road to the Scarlet Gospels, which is going to go up today, I've been going through a lot of the revelatory interviews on ClydeBarker.info. And uh, I've been looking up other confessions and several interviews from – ranging from 1993 to 2013, which is almost it's 20 years of Clive Barker's career, um, which was how, how long we had to wait for another collection of, uh, well, for the Scarlet Gospels, which started out really differently. It was going to be a collection of stories and then ended up becoming a novella. But it's amazing how much a project can change it. It evolves. You know, it's, anyway, I guess you'll have a chance to read that when I post it on the blog. Um, you can always yeah. kind of- you can always kind of tell what uh, what Jose is working on by watching his Facebook page. <laughs> That's true. He'll, he'll kind of uh, deep dive into something and go, oh, look at this cool thing I just found. Um, so one other thing I was going to bring up here, um, we, I, we've been late last, uh, late last night, we were kind of mapping out the episodes that we're going to be doing for the year. And, and it's like every time I thought, okay, I think I've got this all set up. Somebody, I swear to God, this happened two t- two times yesterday. Somebody from Clive Barker's office would email us something, mm-hmm. some new thing that that we're gonna, you know, that we're gonna be have early access to, and it's like, okay, where is that gonna fit in now on on our? Because we got like duels of blood in March, and so um, trying to squeeze this, these things in, but we've got uh, half the year already kind of mapped out. Yeah, it's exciting, but. Uh... It's great that we're getting, you know, more and more uh, connected with, with Seraphin because, like, you guys must have seen that deluxe uh, uh, Thief of Always, which, unfortunately, I can't show because I'm packing my house. So my sh- my office is getting pretty packed and um, because I'm moving to a new house that we're buying. And uh, Well, here it yeah. is. <laughs> we oh, can, yeah. I can show yeah. it here really quick. Um the Deluxe Thief of Always, we were lucky enough to get a publisher's copy for review for the uh, for the Clive Barker podcast. Um, so Jose and I each got one. This is a gorgeous edition. And we won't go into all the details of what's inside it because we're going to be recording an episode here pretty soon about that. But uh, super awesome. This, <laughs> yeah. this, this, was my, this was my little paperback that I read. You know, over the years. Well, actually, this is my work copy that I got yeah. for a penny off of Amazon. But um, with a beautiful, like, Kirk Reinert. Uh, oh, you're cover. bending the spine. It's okay. This was a scent. <laughs> I have another one that's much better than this one. Oh, my God. So, but, uh, yeah. Um, so, Thief of Always, 25th anniversary. It's been really fun. And uh, today we shared a few more posts from Clive Barker's page about it. And, uh like Ryan said, stay tuned for that episode yeah. where we're going to discuss the 25th anniversary. And um, since there have been two Clive Barker releases in the month of February, we're also, you know, our episode's going to be called The Great Grey Beast of February because we also have this great grey beast right here, uh, mm-hmm. the uh, Infernal Parade. So I've just started uh, – we did an episode uh, where we sort of briefly talked about Infernal Parade. Um Gosh, was that our first or second year, maybe? I think it was maybe um, on our first year. Yeah, it was about rare stories. So this is not quite as rare a story anymore Story anymore because it's been published in its own book and it's not just included in uh, the toys. So looking forward to that also. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, something that's very interesting, and we never really got into it that much, um, but we would like to tackle this one this year. It's the Clyde Barker's A through Z of Horror, uh, which was a book edited by Stephen Jones, uh, full of artwork by Clyde Barker. You know, he decorated every single chapter with one of his paintings. And there was a TV show on BBC Two uh, that came out on TV in 1997. So we would like to, that's one of the things that we're going to discuss uh, on this year's lineup. So stay tuned for that. And it's good. It's a good five part uh, episode we're going to be doing because uh, you would think like typically we, a book we can do in one episode, but, uh, but here we're doing a book and a TV series and there's different things for every letter of the alphabet. So uh, we're going to really kind of break it down over the course of March and pair it off. Like we said, with the, um, Duels of Blood website stuff happenings. That's right. And we'll <laughs> see. We'll see if we get anyone to join us and uh, and be a guest, or if we can't, we'll just do the two of us. So that yeah. that's going to be fine. Last year we had Pyramid Gallery join us, and uh, you know I, we haven't approached him yet about it. So we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, and um, and last year I think we had a lot of unused Hellraiser scripts that we talked about in addition to the. Duels of Blood, because Duels of Blood, as you go along, there's less and less to talk about as the as the winners get narrowed. It's like a tournament, so the narrows winners get narrowed down, and there's there are fewer people uh, characters to talk about in matchups and things. Ah, uh, so on to the Kickstarter though. We are um, where we are now. We're actually our goal was five hundred dollars, and that was basically just to keep going for another year, and that would pay the existing you know pay the bills that that we already have. Uh, without any kind of upgrades or anything like that. And at this point, we are at, where are we at? $2,024. So we've reached all of our goals and stretch goals. So the first one, of course, was we paid the bills and, and uh, we you know agreed to do an episode about Sacrament. And it looks like, based on the schedule we've got and all the releases and stuff, that probably won't be happening until June. Right, right. Well, that will give us time to, to read the book again. And take yeah. our notes because it's yeah. not it's not a small book. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I love that one. Uh, I always think about the quote: "Living and dying, we feed the fire." That's a pretty good quote. Yeah. I like Mr. Fox. Yeah, yeah, and uh, Galilee. We uh, we'll be doing an episode on Galilee and one on Mister Be Gone. Uh, Hellraiser Judgment Commentary. Of course, at this point, I had assumed that we would know the release date of the movie by now, but we don't. So, you know, we're, we got to keep a little bit flexible on that one. We don't really know when we'll be able to see it. Yeah, there's been there's been a a, a podcast with Gary Tunnicliffe recently, which is I think it was supposed to be uh, 60 minutes with Gary Tunnicliffe, but it's like three hours. And, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and in that podcast, he goes in in depth about his career and stuff, and he talks about Hellraiser Judgment, <laughs> saying yeah. that uh, it's not his fault, and people are going to beat him up on the way home, and and yeah. that there's been some some messing around with his movie. So that's that's kind of a red flag there. But well, yeah. you know, let's see if we'll do the commentary. If it's really really good, then we'll do an episode about it. But <laughs> yeah, otherwise, well, just the commentary. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that's one thing we want. We were kind of discussing back and forth a little bit, and we didn't really come to an answer. Would it be better for us to watch it the, for the first time doing our audio commentary, or is it better if we're a little prepared and we watch it first and take the, some of the shock away? Uh, Not, <laughs> I don't, you know. I think that's a really s clever suggestion. I think that's really interesting for us to save ourselves for, you know, I mean, reaction videos are huge on the internet, right? Yeah. I mean, people yeah. will watch a trailer and they pretend, or, or they actually do it, I guess. But yeah. they pretend to be really shocked. Oh my God, it's the Millennium Falcon in the Force Awakens trailer. And, <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. We, we could try doing a little bit of that by. We need, to, or, we need to have the sound up a little bit because with these audio commentaries, I've had the sound down so low that you know, because there are movies that we've seen a lot of times. Yeah, you raise so, a good point. We don't want to spoil the whole movie with our commentary track while, while it plays in the background. So, yeah, uh, yeah I guess we'll we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure it out. If yeah. we have to watch it first and then do the commentary, that's fine too. 
Yeah, let us know, you know, on Facebook or the comments here or, you know, wherever, if, what you think, which would be better. Is it better I mean, if we watch it for the first time or is it better if we're a little more prepared and, and uh, we can talk about our, our thoughts a little more coherently? Yeah, luckily we could, we could even do a, a video hangout watching the movie. And, uh, oh, wow. Yeah, I, I was just thinking about that because when we started this broadcast, it said video hangouts can have a maximum of eight hours of video. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know it's probably just going to be a, maybe a, I'm guessing it's going to be between 90 to 100 minutes. I'm not sure. I have no reason to think so, but I don't think it's going to be much, much bigger than that uh, judgment. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, and it it also made me remember the first time I watched Hellraiser Revelations. Um, my face was turning red, and I was just punching my my uh, the arm of my chair the whole time. So, that could be I, yeah, I, well, it maybe not in audio. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Right on. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure how. Uh, yeah. I mean, I know it'll be an authentic reaction, but I don't know how entertaining it will be. Yeah. I guess we'll find out. More books that we're going to try to tackle this year is going to be Mr. Be Gone, which um, I remember when it came out. I was one of the first people in my country to have a copy, thanks to my friend Maureen. Mm. She got a copy signed and sent to me in Portugal like maybe a week or two before it was out. And she went to see Clyde Barker, and he signed the copy and dedicated it to Jose for me. So that was awesome. And uh, and then I listened to the Doug Bradley um, audio book. Yeah. And I, it's really awesome. It's really good. So I'm looking forward to that one. Although it gets a little repetitive, but yeah, it's it's going to be interesting to dive back into Mr. Be Gone. Yeah. Yeah. Burn this book. Mm. But don't. I wonder if anybody has ever done a YouTube video burning a copy of the book. Yeah, they could burn it while, while, uh, while Doug Bradley's uh, audio is playing in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, then we'll do an episode about Cold Heart Canyon, which I believe I only read when it first came out. I don't think I read it a second time. And, um, Nightbreed, Nightbreed Epic Comics. So the, the, the run of 20 comics from Marvel Epic. Right, right. That, uh, that had a part of that run was written by Nicholas Vince. So yeah. unfortunately it was the part of the run that was leading to the cancellation. But, uh, but I, you know, I mean, there's that phone book like release, right. That came out recently with the, with all those, uh, it's like two or three volumes of it. That's all the Marvel Epic comics of, of Nightbreed from the nineties were released in like the, these big Night, Nightbreed archive. I think it was called. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. what I was trying to talk about. Yeah. So I I have the I have the original run, so I'm going to be reading those issues again. It's it's going to be cool to see where they were trying to push the mythology into different directions, and you know they, they went some strange places on that comic book. And, <laughs> yeah. and they even did something I'm really tickled by, which is they connected one piece of Clive Barker's fiction with another, seemingly unrelated, like like Nightbreed with Rawhead Rex, and then they did it also with Hellraiser on Beyond. Yeah. So um, should we also do Jihad or just? Uh, oh yeah, I think it, I think of it more as part of the because Nightbreed had a long continuing story. Mm -hmm. um, so I think of it more as part of the Nightbreed timeline. Um, I guess just okay. have to make sure we get them in the right order because sure. there's some big things happen in the Nightbreed world there. I mean, I guess in Hellraiser too, right? Because like those um, those Cenobites, some Cenobites get killed that, that were main uh, main Cenobite characters in the in the Hellraiser comics too. Yeah, and right. some big, big things happen with with Cabal, and and um, that kind of changed the course of the of the comic series. We've so, we've delivered one of our first uh, Kickstarter goals, actually, even before the campaign ended, which is yeah. we we did the Hekel Stale commentary, and I hope yeah. you guys have had a chance to listen to that. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a lot of fun, um, and uh, we we. we the next one, of course, we, we just talked about how we're going to be doing uh, the Clive Barker's A to Z of Horror. And then we've got uh, Valerie on the Stairs audio commentary we'll be doing also. Um, so there aren't a lot as many audio commentaries this year because these are mainly the ones we didn't think of last year. But but uh, um, 
the big one. Uh, this is the this is the, the thing that you can still get, and people are still. Um, we've we this is the thing we've had the most orders on is our hardcover book. So we will be. I don't know if this is how much work this is going to be. It seems like uh, maybe we took on a lot, but uh, we're going to be putting together a hardcover interview book. Uh, yeah. So again, the book will feature a cover by Clive Barker, and it's going to be uh, subtitled Occupy Occupy Midian, right? And uh, Occupy or Occupying Midian? I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. a good question. The sections inside will be uh, – the interviews will be abridged. They'll be separated by topic to save space. And we're hard at work transcribing episodes. And Ryan's even found a way to put his Amiga computer to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that, that particular keyboard I, is, is where I, you know, came into my own in typing. And that's uh, – I can type the fastest on that. So I've just set up a word processor on on, uh, on the Amiga. And then I listen on my phone and, and I kind of go at it. The first, the first one I started transcribing already actually is probably the hardest episode that we have because of all the background noise. Um, mm-hmm. It was the one we did at Mad Monster Party, which I have to apologize because that's almost unlistenable. I <laughs> forgot I forgot how terrible it was. I think I wasn't using the microphone right. I think I had the microphones pointing at pointing in the wrong direction or something, so that you could hear the people walking around in the in the um, in the convention. Yes, that one. Funny bit of trivia. This is your actual microphone that I thought I had lost once, and I bought another one, and now we have one of each. So actually, Jose is holding up that one that I, the the actual one that I used for that that, uh, interview. It's a Zoom H2. Yeah. So they, what they, the the weird thing about that microphone is it's, it's got, uh, it's, it's got microphones in the front and the back. So you can set it to record the from the front or from the back or all four, and then it makes two separate recordings. And I think, I don't know which one I had it set on, but I think whatever it was, it was wrong. And then also like Richard Mall, you know, the guy from Night Court? Yeah, yeah. He had, cool. he, yeah, he had a puppet of himself and he was like making it scream at people that were walking by and he was just right across from us. That is so weird. Yeah. That is so weird. Yeah, I've it's actually bizarre. Seen I saw him in a movie recently called Metal Storm, The Destruction oh, of yeah. Re- Jared yeah. Sin. Jared yep, Sin, I, yeah. I, I, for some reason I used to own that my 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 dad bought that on Laserdisc when I was a kid. Oh, so wow. I, I thought it was watch. great. It had great effects. The story is okay, but you know, the the makeup effects are really amazing. It was sort of like a Mad Max and a and, uh, bunch of stuff all thrown together. Yeah, yeah. I, I was telling that to Sarah when I was watching. I was like, this is kind of like a Mad Max meets, uh, I don't know, uh, yeah. Angel of the Lost Universe or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I had that one and, and you're the hunter from the future. And I uh-huh. kind of wonder if my dad got those out of a bargain bin or something somewhere. Probably. But yeah, I used to I used to watch those over and over and over again. You're the I'm hunter surprised. from the future had dinosaurs in it. I'm really surprised that they were on Laserdisc. You know, I would imagine those oh. didn't make the jump to Laser, but yeah. Oh, almost everything was on Laserdisc in the 80s. Yeah, that's pretty pretty good. So uh, also one of the things that we succeeded in, in the campaign was you guys helped us get uh, a mobile app. So uh, what's that about, Ryan? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, from what what I've been learning is that the listenership jumps way up if you have a mobile app. And, and uh, you know, I never paid much attention because I listened to all my podcasts just on the Apple podcast app, you know, that came with the phone. But uh, having a special app, I think, will be kind of neat. And um, the costs of that mainly have to do with I have to upgrade the plan with Libsyn. I have to up- upgrade. Uh, I have to pay an additional $10 a month and then and then there's one time fees and it all for the year it all adds up to about $350 that you know that it adds on to our uh, our costs and you know that's presuming that we'll be able to do this again next year which I don't see why not um but yeah I think it, it, it'll be available on the iTunes store and the uh, Google Play store is that what it's called right yeah. Android App Store uh, Google the, Play I think okay yeah yeah so that's cool. I mean, I've I've had radio stations that have like little apps on the store, and sometimes I'll, you know, there was a college radio that I used to listen to a lot in California that was really close to my where where I lived, and um, 
they had a little app. It was called KFJC, and I would I have it on my phone still, so I listen to it all the time. And I had like the Nights with Alice Cooper app where I could listen to his radio show. Um, so I, it's kind of nice to have a have a sort of a dedicated one, and it'll be neat to see like how many people get it and how many people download. It'll be it'll be super handy for people that uh, maybe don't otherwise listen to podcasts. And um, if you really really want it on some other format, I guess would be Windows Mobile or something. Uh, would it maybe let us know? But uh, it seems like Windows Mobile is kind of dying, and and uh, I don't know that. A, a big ecosystem around it in terms yeah. of like apps. Yeah. It, 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 my my impression of it is that there aren't that many phones that have Windows Mobile anymore, that even like the, the carriers that used to have it have switched over to Android. But, um, yeah, if, if that's not the case or if there's a big contingency of people that want it on Windows Mobile, let us know and we might be able to do that too. All right. Cool. And, of course, Duels of Blood. We talked about that. Um, if you remember from last year, we had uh, kind of a um, March Madness-style tournament where people vote on their favorite characters facing off against each other, and then it, it narrows and narrows and narrows until it gets down to the final uh, final two, and then we f- figure out who the winner was. And last year's winner was Julia Chilton. Cotton. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, we're doing prep on that. Uh, we were talking about it last night. We asked you if you wanted more, and you said yes. Yeah. So with, with our with some of the rounds reaching over 5,000 you know, votes, uh, I'm sure this year will be another exciting round of episodes that we'll yeah. be pairing again with the discussion uh, or a slash review of the book and series, Clyde Barker's A through Z of Horror. Um, I hope some of you out there own a copy of that book at least and, and the TV show yeah. if possible. If not, I think... Don't worry, it shows up on YouTube all the time. So we may be, get, may be able to gather a playlist for you guys to uh, to watch along with us. So uh, it's very informative. It's very 90s. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost an education in horror that, that spans across several categories, not, not just cinema, but music, art, popular culture. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we're going to be working hard on finding more 64 characters to yeah. – Put in the Duels of Blood 2, and uh, of maybe course. some will have to be repeats, but we'll try yeah. to find new ones. Well, Julia is the Wicked Queen, so she's out for this year. She'll just be presiding over the tournament. and Yes. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I think a, a lot of it, a lot of who wins also depends on the initial pair-ups, right? I mean, I think that Chatterer would have made it a lot farther if he hadn't been paired up against Pinhead at the start. Oh, yeah, sure. Pinhead yeah. was the great annihilator until, yeah. you know. I, yeah. I forgot who Pinhead lost against, but it, it's all up on yeah. duelsofblood.com if you guys want yeah. to check out the results. Yep, yeah. and uh, pretty soon I'll be wor- reworking that site. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. You. Having a light in my eyes makes me sneeze. Mm-hmm. Uh, but pretty soon um, pretty soon, w- I'll be reworking that site and putting that stuff all in a, you know, Take check out last year's Duels of Blood so that we can prepare for the new one. Yeah, and we got a lot of graphic work done, so that saves time. Yeah, and we can prepare because last the last year we kind of did it a little like spur of the moment thing, and so we were kind of learning our way through how to work it. But uh, now we know, so it's going to be super easy, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So what backer rewards are left for our Kickstarter? I guess the first one is the T-shirt. And so you can see Jose and I are wearing the T-shirt from last year. Yeah. Clive Barker podcast. I love this shirt. And yeah. um, I think that our T-shirt this year may have been a little overshadowed by the prospect of our book. And, you know, the way Kickstarter works, it's not so easy to combine rewards. Uh, like So... We've been selling a, a lot more of the of the books, and so far we've only sold one T-shirt. So, uh, uh, no, <laughs> just one T-shirt. Yeah, well, that's one for you, one for me, one for Joey, and yeah. one for the listener who bought the T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. So please buy more T-shirts. They're really yeah. nice. I spent a lot of time doing them. Yeah, and, and making the work for it, and 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 you know. The, all the graphic design that went into it. it. It took hours and hours of work. And the more we make, the cheaper they are. So yeah. if you guys don't don't get them or you don't like them, then I guess next year we may not even have one. 
Yeah. Can you show the, the design for the, yes. the T-shirt? Absolutely. I got it right here. It's going to be sand colored, and this is what the design is going to look like. And uh, and Jose made that design, and and it was inspired by a dream that Rob told us about uh, that he had had of uh, of a man uh, coming up on an island, and there was an eyeball looking at him. I think was that three three eyeballs three looking eyes down looking, at yeah. him. So yeah, and and that little man in the boat is actually a shape I took out from uh, Vesalius's uh, anatomy book, which is oh, a, yeah. an inspiration for like Frank. And, and and the short movie The Forbidden that Clive did when he was young. And so I yeah, I used some elements like that. I tried making it more something that would be like a nautical kind of theme, like an island and a boat. And I apply that cool woodcut effect on it and all that. So I like it. I love it. I'm gonna get one yeah, copy. Yeah. So um I hope more people yeah, can too. yeah, more people can buy uh more copies of it. If not, we can try making it available during the rest of the year and see if anybody wants to buy them to help support us yeah. throughout the year. But uh, if this one doesn't really make it, I'm not sure if we should make another one next year. And the other thing uh, that I want to remind people, so I know that you may have already picked a reward, and, and uh, but if you just add, say, $30 more to your uh, order, just send us a message or something and say, hey, I want the T-shirt also. And, uh, and we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll put that in. We, you know, I've been, I've been keeping really good notes of, of uh, what the backers want and we've had other backers have combined things and, and it's totally okay. So if you want to, if you want to add a t-shirt to your order and say, Leah, I really wanted a t-shirt, but you know, I, but I already got this other thing. That's okay. Just, just, uh, you know, just increase your, your pledge and, and rent, send us a note. Right on. And we'll do it. Because uh, it'll help us out, too, if you get T-shirts, because right now the one T-shirt order is going to be a very expensive T-shirt. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, what was the next one? We've got, oh, of course, the interview book. So this is exciting. Um, one thing we talked a little about, bit about, but I don't know if we talked about it that much on the podcast. We have an original uh, an original sketch that's that's never been seen before by Clive Barker that will be used for our wraparound cover for this book. That's right. It's it's a picture of Lude's father. Lude was the demon Lude from Nightbreed. And I think it's an excellent cover to go with something that's going to be focused on Occupy Midian and Nightbreed. So, And Lude I'm was worried. sort of like a demigod, or he was uh, his father was a satyr and his mother was a human. Yeah, I think I believe. Was a yeah. Nun. Um, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So then, Lude's Lude's father was 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 pure satyr, and that's that's what we'll have on the on the cover there. And it, it's a really cool cool drawing. Yeah, it's like if you have the Nightbreed Chronicles book on Lude's origin story, uh, and I'm paraphrasing here, but it says something like, "When asked if the demon had a hand in his making, uh, Lude would often laugh and say yes, and a dick too." <laughs> <laughs> that's uh yeah that's, yeah that's how and then uh apparently uh lude would have met his mother in a convent later in his life and made her laugh so much that it cracked the convent bell so <laughs> yeah. it's these little things that clive Barker yeah. comes up with are just so amazing as little mythologies for characters that are just just great yeah uh, next up, we've got the Imagic, uh, Imagica collectible cards. So these are all of the extras that I have left, and there are still a lot. We've had, I think, four uh, four people that chose this for an option uh, to help us out, and there are lots, lots more. Um, so, you know, I, and I, there's a spreadsheet on our site and a link on the Kickstarter page to follow, to, to go to the spreadsheet, and I've been keeping that updated as people make their orders. So you can see you can see what cards are left, what you want to get. Um, I like I said, I've like I've been telling people, I reserve the right to throw in more cards if you order some. So um, I, I will probably be doing that at this point. Um, you know, it's a great chance for anybody who's looking to complete their collection. I mean, you have plenty of repeats. Yeah, yeah. Yep, and and an entire box full of common cards too. So mm -hmm. I'll be probably throwing some of those in as well. 
We still have some posters available. We have an Imaginer One promo poster. Here, here is the uh, here's the Imaginer One poster. Whoa, okay. These come rolled up in a tube, so it's. But the, yeah, this is the Imaginer One poster, and there aren't very many of these left, I don't think. Uh, now that Imaginer One is like three or four years ago. And uh, Century Guild ended up donating some posters to our campaign. So here's a Imaginer Two promotional poster. Oh wow! You know, is this showing up the right way or mirrored? Yeah, no, it's. I it looks good to me. I can read it's it. Text by Thomas Ningoven and Phil and Sarah Stokes. Volume Two available now. Yeah, and Imaginer really is the finest book to ever carry my name, Clyde Barker. So I have to figure out how we're going to send these because they're not that big. But yeah. I don't know if they can be rolled into a tube. I think they or, could be rolled uh, longitudinally. Is yeah, that or that to like a stiff-backed uh, flat envelope or something. Yeah, it would have to be a really big envelope. And uh, and this is the Do Not Trust the Smiling World. And that's also definitely our most popular poster. We've been selling a bunch of those, but there's still a lot more. So It's uh, really it, good. It's really good. And I and found a way that I can roll it up like this. Oh, so, okay. And you I won't find that like poster any, anywhere else. I think we have them all, right? It sure seems uh, that way. Yeah, I think we got we got the entire run. So we're selling 100 of these. And, uh, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll keep these available. Probably won't be able to get them anywhere else except yeah. maybe from Century Guild. But I think they sent us their stock. Yeah. So, Anyway, that's that's two posters that are pretty cool. They would look great framed on a Clyde Barker fan's wall, especially this one. I mean, this one is just so beautiful. You have the wolf wearing a, a mask, and it just comes out of like you know children's stories. It's 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 the big bad wolf trying to trick a uh, little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> yeah, and that's do not trust the smiling world, my child. It hides a hunger that will be your unmaking. If you look away for but a, a moment, so there it is. Sometimes it's hard to read Clyde Barker's handwriting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Tell that to like Ben Mears and Mark Miller. Yeah, <laughs> they've been uh, transcribing. Uh, I think Mark Miller did a huge bulk of the work of transcribing the Scarlet Gospels out of two thousand pages of handwritten notes. <clears throat> yes, and then Aberat three as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> So, um, we also have choose a topic for the podcast, which um, at this rate we may end up we might be able to fit them in actually in the in, before then. But uh, but yeah, choose a topic for the podcast. So in the past we had uh, we had three people choose that, and two of them uh, became guests on the show, and and uh, Don Bertram was one of them. So we had a really a really good talk about Clive Barker's art and and memories of Clive Barker with Don Bertram. And we had um, probably one of my favorite episodes about Imagica with Ben Warren last year. Um, so the, both of those were really good. Yeah, and it's always great because Don Bertram has just uh, uh, this year, which is amazing. Thank you so much, Don, for, for continuing to support us. And uh, talking to you was a very humbling experience as a Clive Barker fan because I thought I knew a lot of stuff. But then when we started talking, I realized, oh, no, I don't know almost anything. Yeah. Like, because, you know, Don's a guy who's been to Clive Barker's house. He's had conversations with Clive Barker. He's been to a whole enormous number of, like, exhibits and even has artwork and stuff. So, it, it, and the work that he does is amazing because he, yeah. he's also an artist in his own right. And he has that Celebrate Imagination program, which helps um, – you know, helps uh, children who are suffering from cancer. Yeah. So we really appreciate that. And, and uh, we have, th we have that, um, we'll be talking about that again for, for this year. And, and uh, you know, as a sponsored, which it's really nice when you have a sponsor that, uh, that is, that's so cool, you know, that you can kind of get behind. You know, I think, yeah. I think last year we were joking around about that we, we had this opened up, you know, that advertising on six episodes or 12 episodes. What do we do if it's like porn or something? You know, <laughs> we, we would have to reserve the right to, uh, and I guess, not accept things that would be potentially embarrassing or illegal on our show. Yeah, yeah. You know, or, or if it's something that you don't get behind, then I guess you just 
say you make your own, you know, ad and we'll just stick it on there. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, but luckily Don Bertram is, is an amazing person. And yeah. he's doing this Celebrate Imagination with the Texas Children's Hospital. So it, it's, a, it's a great way to support a worthwhile cause. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Don. Again, we really appreciate that. Um, so advertising, we have six episode package or 12 episode package in there. Still, still some of those available. Um, and we have four days left. Uh, like we said, uh, this will end on February 19th at 9:53 AM Alaska time. So, uh, if you, if you probably don't know what Alaska time is, it's one hour earlier than Pacific time. So, yeah. uh, Right now, it's almost 10 o'clock Alaska time. For Jose, it's almost 11 o'clock in Arizona. Um, no, no. Because because they don't do – they're like Pacific time, but they don't do the daylight savings. So that's no. all – yeah, scheduling is really fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially oh, when God. we have guests in England and they have daylight savings time, but they do it on a different day than in the United States. And Or like one time we had uh, somebody from, from – um, Australia, and we they completely missed the episode because of trying to figure out time zones. Yeah, that happened. Yeah, luckily yeah. they they sent us like a video file that we added to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, time zones are fun. But but um, anyway, yeah. Nine nine. So basically, Sunday morning of the nineteenth is uh, is when this is going to run out of time, and you know, and then then that will be the end of it. Yeah, you can you can check the time on the campaign. It, it, I think it adjusts it for wherever you are looking at it. So, uh, four days, people, come on. Yeah. We gotta we gotta sell more books. We gotta sell more T-shirts. <laughs> and please, please support us. And we thank you so much. Yeah, and and again, just you know, we're we're super casual about this. Just add some money, uh, send us a note, and tell us what you want to do, and we can probably accommodate you and and combine things. Yeah. Um, and, and, also, it's not like if our campaign was five hundred dollars and we get two thousand. It's not that we're going to be like, oh my god, I'm going to cover my bed with money. No, because yeah. we have to deliver on the rewards. So the yeah. more the more rewards we sell, the less margin of error we have. Uh, yeah. Because obviously, you know, these books are going to be expensive. This T-shirt is going to be expensive, and uh, the more we sell, the cheaper they get. So the more we can add to the little pile that would be like, okay, now we have a little bit of pocket money for our podcast so we can maybe buy this release or maybe, you know, improve a microphone or maybe this or that. But most of it, it's going to be pretty much accounted for. And Kickstarter yeah. takes almost a third of your campaign money anyway. Yeah. So. And this year, um, last year I shipped everything. And, and so – Combining things this year may be a little bit more expensive if some of the things that will be shipped from Jose's place in Arizona and yeah. some some things will be shipped from from where I am in Fairbanks, Alaska, uh, then we have a you know then we have a higher shipping cost as well. But you know we're happy to do it. So um, just just to let you know that you know two thousand dollars doesn't really equal two thousand dollars in profit. Right. No. <laughs> but anyway, we do this again because we love it because it yeah. it. it keeps us in touch with people like you who are out there listening to our show. And, you know, I've, I've made so much, so many friends from being in the podcast. I mean, people who I talk to, if not every other day, then maybe every week. And, mm -hmm. you know, people who are on my Facebook friends now and who I hope to meet one day. And uh, it keeps us close to Clive Barker, which is great because we're Clive Barker nerds. We love to yeah. be kept abreast of all these like interesting things that are coming out. And, uh, for example, this morning I was reading a copy of, uh, Hellraiser anthology that's going to be coming out soon, but yeah. we've had a chance to read it before anybody else does, which is amazing. And we have to come up with a spoiler free article now to post on our blog. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Yeah, that, and uh, we'll do a uh, podcast episode about it. And so again, if you're looking for the Kickstarter, um, this is going to go out on audio and on on video on YouTube. And so we will have that in the show notes and on a comment on YouTube or in the in the uh, in the description, I guess, on YouTube. Sure, we'll have we'll have a link to the Kickstarter to make sure that you're easily able to find it. Um, but if you're just listening, you're not on a computer, or whatever, you're just watching, you don't want to 
you don't want to hunt that down, just sometime go on to Kickstarter and do a search for Clive Barker and we'll be the number one, you know, result. So hopefully, <laughs> yeah, I think so. So, you know, we're, let's, we're, we got four more days, so come on people yeah. help us out here. And, uh, to those who have helped us out already, I thank you, but it's like, yeah. Spread the word. Please spread yeah. the word. You have a friend that likes Fly Barker, let him know about, you know, the podcast and, and you know, tell him to listen to us and maybe he'll like it and become a supporter. Kickstarters are usually really, really exciting in the beginning and then kind of sleepy and boring in the middle. And mm-hmm. then they get really exciting again at the end. So we're at the beginning of the exciting part at the end right now. So um, the last four days. So uh, we're really excited about this and we want to see See where it goes. See what, you know, hopefully we can sell some more T-shirts. Yes, yes, T-shirts. All right. Yeah. go. I put a lot of time on those things. Yeah. Anyway, thank you for joining us on this BarkerCast Hangout special. And this podcast, having had no beginning, shall have no ending. You can find the show notes for this page and lots of Clive Barker news and features at www.clivebarkercast.com. Leave comments there or get them directly into the podcast by clicking the Send Voicemail tab on the right. Please follow us on Twitter at BarkerCast or at Occupy Midian. Like us on Facebook and join the Occupy Midian Facebook group. You can listen on the site or subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, Libsyn, TuneIn, PocketCast, Google Play, and DoubleTwist. Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Please take a couple of minutes to leave us a review on iTunes. It means the world to us and helps us spread the word about Clive Barker. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial fan site and podcast that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Films. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Thanks for listening.